Okay, I'm continuing my reading, and what I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Right now, I am still in numbers. This will be chapter 15. However, I will mention again my son and wife are with me off camera, so you may hear them in the background. Like right there. He is reading the book Yertle the Turtle to himself. Here we go. Ver chapter 15. Various sacrificial ordinances bring forgiveness to repentant Israel. Those who sin willfully are cut off from among, uh, from among people. A man stoned for gathering sticks on Sabbath day. Israel to look on fringes of garments and remember commandments. Some interesting stuff going on here. Hey, Nathaniel, shh, quietly. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, or a free will offering, or in your solemn feasts, to make a sweet savor unto the Lord of the herd or of the flock, then shall he that offereth his offering unto the Lord bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of, fl of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin of oil. And the fourth part of an hin of wine for a drink offering shalt thou prepare with the burnt offering or sacrifice for one lamb. Or for a ram thou shalt prepare for a meat offering two tenths deal of fine fl of flour mingled with the third part of an hin of oil. And for a drink offering, thou shalt offer the third part of an hin of wine, for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And when thou preparest a bullock for a burnt offering, or for a sacrifice in performing a vow, or peace offerings unto the Lord, then shall, be, <clears throat> then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three tenths deal, deals of flour, mingled with half an hin and oil. And thou shalt bring for a drink offering half a hin of oil, a half a hin of wine, for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Thus shall it be done for one bullock, or for one ram, or for a lamb, or a kid. According to the number that ye shall prepare, so shall ye do to every one according to their number. All that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner, in offering an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord, as ye do, so, sh uh, so he shall do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation, and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you, an ordinance forever in your congregations. As ye are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. Now this is an important thing. It's come up before that Israel and the stranger are to have the same law. And when it means stranger, this doesn't... You wouldn't be performing a sacrifice like this unless you were converted to the Lord and were joining. The, this is for converts. In the modern day, we would say these are those who are born in the covenant and those who uh, are baptized later, those who will join the church later. One law for both. It doesn't matter when you become when you join the covenant, whether you're born into it, as it says here, as part of the congregation, or whether you join later, which would be a stranger who comes into the land and wants to uh, participate in the religion. The law is the same. Verse seventeen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land whither I bring you, then it shall be that when ye eat of the bread of the land, ye shall offer up an heave offering unto the Lord. Ye shall offer up a cake of the first of your, of your dough for an heave offering, as ye do the heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye heave it. Of the first of your dough ye shall give unto the Lord, an heave offering in your generations. So, again, at harvest time, the first thing you do is you pay your tithe.
tithing to the Lord, basically. You make an offering to the Lord. Verse 22. And if ye have erred and not observed all these commandments which the Lord hath spoken unto Moses, even all that the Lord hath commanded you by the hand of Moses from the, from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforward among your generations, then it shall be, if aught be committed by ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering, for a sweet savor unto the Lord, with his meat offering and his drink offering, according to the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them. For it is ignorance, and they shall bring their offering a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord, and their sin offering before the Lord for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel, and the stranger that sojourneth among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. This is just rehashing what was said back in the book of Leviticus. So let us see here. Verse 27. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. When he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord, it make, <clears throat> to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. You shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among you. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether it be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he hath despised the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Now, again, I don't think this is for any transgression. This is talking about excommunication, basically. You're going to be kicked out of the land, exiled. But I doubt this is for any transgression. This is for those who are in willful rebellion, who know the truth, know the commandments, and actively go out to break the commandments. So it's like, if you're going out and you accidentally do something, even if you know you weren't supposed to, when it talks about sinning in ignorance, this isn't talking about, I didn't know the law, and so I broke it because I didn't. It's more, I knew the law, but in the moment, I didn't realize that what I was doing was in violation of the law. And so now I have to go and repent and make, but if you were saying, I knew what I was doing was in violation of the law, and I did it anyways, then that is what we mean, that is what is meant by acting presumptuously. This is somebody who knows that they are doing wrong and does it anyways. So, you know, in the heat of the moment, I might curse, yell at somebody, whatever. And then I, then I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. And I go repent and I make my, my, my sin offering. But... On the other hand, if I know what I'm doing and I say, oh, I don't care, well, and I'm just rambling a little bit here, so let, let us move on. I think, I think we get the idea. Verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared that, uh, what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp, and stoned him with stones. And he died, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye use to go a whoring that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your god I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. A couple of things. First of all, the man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. I don't think this was just a guy who was 
picking up sticks off the ground. You know, it, it just doesn't seem logical to me. I think this was more like he was a woodcutter. That his job, or, you know, he was gathering wood to sell. Now, it could be exactly what it says, that he was just gathering sticks, but I get the impression that this was more than just a guy out there collecting up wood off the ground. It was like, after a big, after a big windstorm, I go outside and there's a couple of sticks in my front yard and I just pick them up and toss them to the side. Am I really breaking the Sabbath? I get, I, I don't, I don't think so. But if I go out and I chop firewood for the intent of selling it, now I am. So, but then we have these fringes. And I do want to mention this is the fringes. You remember the temple garments that we have in the modern day. These are the garments of the holy priesthood. And everybody who is ordained to the Melchizedek priesthood is supposed to get the endowment and get the garments. And uh, all the women of the same age as the men who would be endowed. This is what it is. This is the, this is the garments of the holy priesthood. But the priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood, has been withheld from most of Israel in the time of Moses. And so we still, as I pointed out, in the garments that are, were made for Aaron and his sons, we see the, the linen breeches that are made to be worn underneath the priestly robes. We see a uh, parallel to the modern garment. But because the rest of Israel didn't have the priesthood, they don't get the full garment. But they do get the fringe, a blue fringe put in their clothes, as a reminder, as the same purpose as the holy garment, as a reminder of the commandments of the Lord and the covenants we have made, but without the same priesthood connection. So I'm going to leave that here, and I will see you in the next one.